Tony Kornheiser. Are you already trying to divert me from your sorry bears with this NASCAR yes. stuff? Come on. Yes, yes, yes. Come on. Yes, I, you know, I, I gave up football yesterday. I saw Joey Logano win, but I was not rooting for Joey Logano and Penske. You know who I was rooting for? Rooting for 23-11. 23. Yeah, you, Michael Jordan. Sure, I understand that. He needs okay, another they, ring. He needs another trophy. He, need, you know, sure. You know, he could use one. Sure, his his mantle has room for something maybe this big. Yeah. Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. In today's episode, the Steelers top the Commanders. Ole Miss knocks off Georgia, and some truly terrible losses in the NFL. But we begin today with two last-second wins yesterday by the conference leaders, Kansas City and Detroit. Kansas City beat Denver by blocking a 35-yard field goal attempt and hanging on 16-14. to Detroit scored all the points in the second half and came back from 16 down with a 52-yard field goal and beat Houston in Houston 26-23. So, Wilbon, what's the bigger win by a top seed, the Chiefs or the Lions? So, every week now we start. I love starting this way on an NFL Monday. And every week now for the last five weeks, my answer is Detroit. It's Detroit. It's Detroit, and, and, and I, I'm not hating on the Chiefs, who are amazing in the way they win games. That's what champions do. But it's Detroit, Tony. Detroit went on the road to Houston. I know Houston's lost like three or four, but Houston's still really good. They ran up that lead. Your MVP threw five interceptions, and they got right. over a five-pick game the road. And their coach says at halftime, You know, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get a turnover. We're going to play better defensively. We're going to turn that turnover into, like, blueprints it on the air. And they do it. It's Detroit. They're on the road. Kansas City was at home where they enjoy what you know I believe to be. The three great home courts in the league are Green Bay, Kansas City, and and, uh, and Detroit. Those are the three to me. They're at home. Detroit on the road. Tony, what the Lions yeah. are doing, and they're doing it without Aiden Hutchinson. They did it without defense at all in the first half. Detroit is amazing. I'd love to see Detroit, Kansas City. I hope we're, we're, I hope we're steering toward that. I really do. Yeah, so I'm going to have a little honest disagreement here because I think it's Kansas City, and the reason I think it's Kansas City is because it's a miracle win. They are supposed to lose that game. Denver did everything. Too. They retained possession of the ball. They bled the clock. They lined up for a last-second field goal. How many field goals in the NFL are blocked? The answer is not many. 35 yards. Not many. Wow. You know, and, yeah, that they're going to win. Denver's going to win. And so by winning that game, Kansas City, and by staying undefeated, to me, they have a sort of mythological yes, sense of true. invincibility I'm not now. Because there. they're agree. supposed to lose that. Detroit's win is different to me in this regard. Yes, they get credit for being on the road. Kansas City gets some credit for beating a division rival. So I think that balances out. But Detroit went out there and progressively won that game. Yeah. They, they outscored the other team 19-0 <laughs> yeah. in the second half. They shut down Houston completely. There was a sense to me of an inevitability of the way Detroit did that. They held the fort. They were grinding, as a true championship team should do. But to me, they had a right to win. They were piling it on, you know, going further and further and further, whereas Kansas City was a miracle. So that's why I say Kansas City. Yeah, the the opponent was a little tougher, too. Denver's a worthy team now. They're a worthy opponent. Denver's gotten better. Tony, but the home home field, Kansas City's a massive home field advantage. and, And, you know... Playing in Houston, I thought was a little tougher. Anyway, one of the best matchups on the Sunday schedule really did deliver. George Pickens scored first, Mike Williams last, and the Steelers edged the Commanders 28-27 in what was a true back-and-forth game. Rookie defensive tackle Johnny Newton later got drawn offside on a critical fourth and one that kept the Commanders from getting the ball back and into the hands of Jaden Daniels, who had his struggles. That rarely happens. Tone, what did you learn from the Steelers beating the Commanders? Well, I learned, first of all, how much I hate the name Commanders, and I wish they would change that. That's number one. <clears throat> what did I learn about the Steelers? I learned I was wrong about Russell Wilson, that Russell Wilson is still very good. It did not work out at all in Denver. It works out perfectly in Pittsburgh. Mike Tomlin put him in. The Steelers are 3-0 and with Russell Wilson. 
They are averaging 383 yards of offense per game and 30 points per game. And with Justin Fields, they average 21. All right, now Russell Wilson didn't have the greatest day in the world, but he dropped it down the chimney he to did. Mike Williams when he, he had to. He yeah. did that. The only thing that causes me to back off the Steelers a little bit actually is their upcoming schedule. They have two with Baltimore, two with Cincinnati. They got the Eagles and the Chiefs. That's a really tough schedule. What did I learn about Washington? They're legit as a playoff team. They're actually a good team at this point. They went toe-to-toe with a very good team. They were in there at the end of the game, right? Jaden Daniels has reason. He gives people in Washington, D.C., like you and I, he gives us hope. He does not turn the ball over, and he's very calm. And there's a lesson to another thing, that if you ever see a veteran quarterback under center on fourth and one late in <laughs> the game, the, ball. the defensive line oh, coach has to say to his players yeah. who are rookies, yeah. it's a trick. Yeah. Don't fall Don't do for it. it. They're not going to snap Don't the ball. Don't do it. Look, look, look at the, you're, on the, you're lined up right there. you got to look at the ball, which I hear great defensive players say. Tony, like you, I, I learned about, I, I'm glad this is confirmation about Russell Wilson. Because you know I like to root yeah. against Sean Payton anyway. And, and that's cool because Sean Payton's a worthy dude. Sean, Sean Payton wears a championship ring. You can root against him. I do. He got rid of Russ. And Russ had a little bit left. And Mike Tomlin thought that. Yeah. And that's why yeah. Mike Tomlin yeah. said at the beginning of the season, I continue with my NASCAR analogies, he's in the pole position, Russ is. And yep. he put Justin yep. Fields on the bench. And Fields handled it beautifully. It also reminds you that the Steelers understand Who's running that show? Okay. And Mike Thomas says, we're going to be a little bit better. They can throw the ball down the field. Even when Russ isn't great, Tony, he's got touch on the deep ball. He can get That's it right. down there. That's right. The Steelers have to feel they're a different kind of threat. And yes, with I agree the, with Washington. They Tough are schedule. worthy. That was an I, even game. Even game. Is so here's game. the thing about Washington. Washington, this has happened overnight. They are a much better team overnight. They were 4-13 and 13 last year. They changed coaches. They changed coordinators. They changed quarterbacks. They empowered the GM to the bring G- in all new yes. people. Managed. And now they're 7-3. Well well, managed they're seven and, and three. owned yeah. all of it. You know, yes. they are – it's 25 years of bad football gone in the snap of yeah. a finger. Let's turn to college football where there were good games everywhere you looked. The headline is probably that Ole Miss plain suffocated Georgia. They were down 7-0 early. They scored 21 points against the number three team in the nation. Wilbon, do you have Ole Miss's win as clearly the biggest result of the weekend? Clearly, no. No, I I don't. Um, I I look at – I know that Indiana struggled a little bit with Michigan, but they beat Michigan. It's a big hurdle. Indiana's got this many 10-win seasons ever won this one. They just got there. That's so right. Indiana, that was That's a big right. result for those of us in the Midwest. Um, and also Colorado winning that game, Tony. Colorado beating Texas Tech in what was, at least for three quarters, a thriller. A thriller. And they have gotten, look, people want to question what Dion does and transfer portal, who he brings in, and is he a great coach? Okay, so they went from nothing two years ago to excitement last year to now being a threat. Colorado's going to play three games left in their regular season and be favored in all three of them to get to the conference title game in which they're probably going to have to beat BYU. That's the game. And that game could yield a spot in the playoff. Come on now. No, no. Oh, Dion and Colorado, that will. it will. Oh, right. Dion and oh, Colorado, no, I, I thought, was as big. I, and I, th- I, I give credit to Dion. He, he inherited a team that was 1-12, and, and he's now 7-2, and two and he's won 6 out of 7, even if you don't like him because you think he's a polarizing figure. You've got to give credit to how he has coached there. It's been terrific. Um, I think the Ole Miss thing is a real big deal because Lane Kiffin was 0-5 against Alabama and Georgia, and, and they won that game going away. But I got two other things that are important. I think Miami losing is a big yes, deal. Yes, it was. Nobody it saw is. that coming. No. Because now well, I think that reduces or could reduce – the ACC to a one-bid league, which leads me to something. Alabama throttled LSU at LSU, and no amount of live Tigers in the stadium can change that. <laughs> what it does change for me is this notion, and I think we'll be talking weeks. I think a three-loss team from the SEC may very well get into a 12-team playoff. 
Georgia has two losses. Alabama has two. Ole Miss has two. Tennessee has one. Texas has one. But Tennessee has to go to Georgia. Texas has to go to Texas A&M. And then there's a, there's a conference a championship game. game. Yeah. I think there is going to be a bona fide three-loss team in the SEC that could play in the playoffs. And I know how you feel about this. You think the SEC and the Big Ten have eaten college football. It's just and a, you think it's junk. It's a challenge. But I think it's, it's like a the big basketball. deal. Remember when you used to do the, the Big East, SEC, Big Ten, SEC challenge? Okay, fine. There's no drama to that for me. And that's my conference. I don't, I don't I care. They just want to have an invitation. Don't name it. Then make it what it is. Then be bold enough, marketing people, to just say, we don't want you other folks. This is the SEC Big Ten deal. And the Big Ten. Wing That's ding. It. That's what it is. Let's take a break. Coming up, the Jets and Cowboys got blowed out. But did the Bears have the worst loss of the weekend? Yes. Can we move on now? Jalen Brown, is he right to be annoyed by Giannis and that fake handshake? You know. Yeah. By the way, Mike Tomlin now 26 and 6 against rookie quarterbacks. Damn. 14 and 4 after bye. You like narrow. that? Narrow. It was narrow you like yesterday. That? Pardon me. It's time to find out what's moving the multitudes in mail time. Mail get time. First one here. Here we go. Which team had the worst loss? The Jets. The Cowboys or your Bears? And this is easy. I mean, the Bears. The Bears had the – people be surprised. As much trouble as the Bears had the two previous weeks, they came into this with the longest winning streak at home, home winning streak in the NFL. And they just – they have no spirit. The Hail Mary from now two-plus weeks ago against Washington, I told you, Tom, their spirit. They're done. And they, they, they've fallen and they can't get up. The offensive coordinator needs to be relieved. If not fired, I don't even know about the head coach anymore. Caleb Williams gets sacked on every play. Four offensive linemen were missing. But still, you got to figure out a way to protect them with some play calling. They can't do it. They were at home. I mean, the Jets fell and can't get up weeks ago. And so that's not a surprise. No, it's, it's the Bears. And I, I told you they're going to be – they look like a 6-11 and 11 team. I don't know where they can get the 6. They look like a 4-13 and 13 yeah. team with six games coming against the toughest division opponents in football. They're done. Yeah, I, I agree with that. It is the Bears. And the reason it's the Bears is because they actually lost to a terrible team. New England is a terrible team. And the number one overall draft pick, who I know you love dearly, Caleb Williams, a quarterback, um, he's going backwards a little bit. And maybe yep. it would help him, as it helps a lot of rookies, to sit for a while, to sit and watch and get a sense of what the NFL really